hello everyone so today i'm going to talk about the higher holders algorithm so this is the algorithm for finding the euler's path in a directed and undirected graph so before we move on to the algorithm uh, let's quickly see what is euler's path euler's path is a path in a graph which covers all the edges exactly once so what do i mean by that is so for example in this graph this is an undirected graph if we start from node 4 then we can move to node 3 so 4 3 2 1 5 and 2 right so it's a path we started from a starting node 4 so this is this is the start this is the starting node and what's the end node end node is 2 right this is the end node so we started from node 4 and we ended at 2 and while going from 4 to 2 we used all the edges without repeating them right so 4 to 3 3 to 2 2 to 1 1 to 5 5 to 2 notice that the nodes are repeated so vertices can be repeated this node 2 is repeated the only condition is that the edges should not be repeated now some people confuse this with the hamiltonian path so hamiltonian path is a path in which all the vertices that is all the nodes should be used only once Right. So Hamiltonian path does not have a constraint over the edges, it has a constraint over the vertices. But we are not talking about Hamiltonian path today. So it's Euler's path. In Euler's path, the edges should be used once. Nodes can be used as many times as you want. Right. So this is for undirected graph. Now let's see the example for uh, directed graph. This graph again. So starting node is uh, 1. So this is the start node and the end node is 3 so we start from node 1 go to 2 3 then 5 and 4 then 2 then back to 4 and then to 3 notice that nodes are used multiple times so 3 is used right twice then we have uh, node 4 getting used twice then we have node 2 also getting used twice right so it does not matter how many times the nodes are revised are revisited as long as edges are only used once so notice in this path while moving from one to three we covered all the edges and none of them were repeated so this is a euler's path right usually uh, euler's path to exist in a graph there is a condition so what is the condition so for undirected graph let me go back to the previous figure so for undirected graph a Euler's path is there in the graph if and only if first of all the graph is connected so that's the first condition that's the condition always for undirected or directed graphs so graph should be connected and then all the vertices except two have even degree right and one of those two vertices will be the start node and the other will be the end node so if you see in the graph the node 4 has an odd degree there is only one edge attached to it so its degree is 1 right its degree is 1 so it's an odd degree and node 2 again has odd degree there are three edges this this and this so its degree is 3 if you look at any other vertex so vertex 1 has 1 2 edges so its degree is 2 5 again has 2 edges 3 again has 2 edges right so there are two nodes Two vertices which have odd degree one of them will become the start node and the other one will become the end node of the Euler's path so this is the condition for undirected graph okay so this is the condition for Eulerian path to exist and if you want Eulerian circuit uh, then that will exist if and only if first of all the graph is connected and then all the vertex have even degree so if all the vertex have even degree then there will be a Eulerian circuit but what about the directed graph so if you look here then in the directed graph the eulerian path will exist if and only if it is connected so that is of course there and each vertex except two have the same in degree as out degree right and these two vertices one of them will have uh, extra in degree and the other one will have an extra out degree so it's very similar to the undirected graph and it actually makes sense so all the nodes should have an equal number of in degree and out degree except two 
and one of them will become the start node and the other will become the end node so if you look in this graph so it has an in degree of 0 and out degree as 1 similarly this uh, node 3 which is the end node here it has an in degree of 2 and out degree of 1 right all other nodes if we look at this node it has an in degree of 2 and out degree of 2 this node again has in degree of 2 and out degree of 2 this node has in degree 1 out degree 1 right so all of them have an equal number of in degree and out degree there are two nodes in which the in degree and out degree differ by 1 right so in this the in degree the out degree is greater than uh, the in degree by 1 and this is why it becomes a starting node and this node the in in degree is greater than the out degree and that's why this becomes the end node so again if all of them have equal number of in degree and out degree then that's a condition for eulerian circuit to exist in the graph so i hope this is clear so i told that we have higher order algorithm to find this path but why do we need that why can't we just use simply use dfs to traverse and maybe do something with that in normal dfs we visit all the nodes exactly once and we have a visited array that keeps track of the nodes which have been visited and we don't visit them again right that's what we do in dfs but we do not care about how many times we visit an edge and that's why we cannot use dfs directly here but we can modify dfs to arrive at higher holders algorithm okay so in dfs if we discard the visited array which tracks the visited nodes and we add on some data structure or some other mechanism to track the edges which have been visited then that may do the trick right now how do we uh, track the edges that have been visited so maybe we can have some data structure that stores and some trick that does that or maybe we can just dynamically remove every time we visit an edge we remove it so so this basically tracks that okay the the graph will only have the unvisited edges and which will ensure that we don't visit the edges which have been already visited so if we do that we will actually arrive at higher holders algorithm and in this way the edges will be visited only once and nodes can be visited multiple times so vertices can be visited multiple times but the edges will be visited only once and we also need to keep track of the edges because that is going to be our output right we remember we have to output a path something like this so in the code we have to keep track of the visited edges and at the end return the edges first i will just um, quickly put a code for dfs and then we'll slightly modify it to arrive at higher holders algorithm okay so this is the simple dfs we have a adjacency list graph and we have a visited array we have a node we mark the node as visited we look for its neighbors if neighbors are not visited visit them this is the standard dfs now we are going to modify and see the higher holders uh, before i do that let me just make a graph and the adjacency list so that it's easier to dry run okay so this is the graph i have and i have just put the dfs code in uh, small letters here so we have this graph one is the starting node and six is the end node and this is the adjacency list so the neighbor of one is two the neighbor of two is three in the neighbor of three we have four and five and the four from 4 there is edge to 3, from 5 there is an edge to 6, and from 6 there is no edge. Right? So it denotes the this is the adjacency list. Now let's look at the higher holders algorithm. Okay, so this is the higher holders algorithm. We take the graph and we have a path. This is stores the result in reverse order. So this is stores a result. And then we have a starting node. Here its uh, node is 1, for example. So for the starting node, we look if the neighbors exist. So if a uh, graph of this node is not empty. So for example, here for one, it's not empty. There are neighbors. So we go inside the loop. We take a neighbor and then we remove the neighbor. So removing a neighbor basically means removing the edge. So what this means is the edge is visited. So we have already covered this. Edge. This is why we are going to remove it. So we remove it and then we just call the higher holders on that neighbor. 
and we keep on doing this for a one node until all the edges are exhausted so when all the edges are exhausted that means when all of them are visited they will be popped out and when they are popped out there is nothing in the in the neighbor of a particular node so there are no edges so this loop will become false and thus that node will get pushed back into path now this is a very similar to dfs this thing is very similar to dfs exactly almost same thing which uh, look at the neighbor if they are not visited we visit them we look at the neighbor if they exist we visit them right this is what we do so now let's uh, look at this line what does this line do so i will just do a dry run and then this line will make sense so let's do for this graph and uh, let me put as path what the path will contain so initially starting node is one right so while graph of node is not empty graph of one is not empty that's true then we take a neighbor uh, so the neighbor is two we pop it back so this is gone so let me cut it this is gone and now we move on to uh, we call the higher holders on this neighbor which is node two so we are here right now on node two its neighbor it still exists right so we take it out so neighbor becomes three we pop it back so this is gone and now we move on to three so let me remove this and now we are on node three now we look at the neighbors of three there are neighbors so we take the neighbor from the back which is five we pop it so five is gone now we move on to five so this is now on five okay look at the five there is a neighbor so this condition is true we take out the neighbor we pop it so this is gone and now we move on to this neighbor so neighbor was six so now we move on to six now we are on node six so there are no neighbors this is empty so the condition is uh, this while condition is false so we come to this line and we push back node six so now our path contains six right now we backtrack and we move back so this is gone so when we move back we are back to five right now we look uh, uh, look for the neighbors of node five there are no neighbors six was popped out so this is empty so this condition is false and we push five to path okay now we move back again now we are back to node three we look for neighbors there is a neighbor four is there so we uh, take the neighbor four we pop it so now four is also gone and now we move on to four now we are on node four right we go for the node four and we see there is a neighbor right so three is the neighbor we pop it so three is gone and now we move on to three so now we are again back to three so we look for the neighbors of three there are no neighbors so this condition is false now we will just push uh, three to the path so three goes inside path okay now we backtrack so uh, from where we came to three we came from four so we will go back to four so now i am node i am on node four we look for the neighbors of four there are no neighbors this condition is false now we'll push back four okay so how did we reach four we came for three it came from three so in backtracking we'll move back to three again we look for the neighbors of three there are no neighbors this condition is false we push it again so three goes again and uh, now we'll backtrack so how did we reach three we reached from two so we backtrack to two we look for the neighbors no neighbors condition false it will get pushed so two goes inside and now how did we come to two we came from one so we'll go back to one in backtracking and there are no neighbors everything is gone so we'll just push it again and now the this everything is done there are no nothing left so this uh, function returns now this path contains a euler's path in reverse order so when we are returning we will actually reverse, reverse this order. so what will the actual path it will be 1 2 3 4 3 5 6 so let's look here 1 to 2 2 to 3 3 to 4 4 to 3 3 to 5 and 5 to 6 this is the Euler's path right all the edges are used only once none of them are repeated and all of them are covered so this is the higher holders algorithm for finding the Euler's path so I hope this made sense uh, you can take few other graphs and do a dry run then it will 
be much clear and it's very similar to dfs to try to relate and understand them okay so that's all for today if you have any doubts please post in comments i will try to answer them uh, that's it see you bye